Well, in that case, good evening. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. Friend, first up, Mr. Doyle, should we reorganize? Sure. All right. Okay, thanks, John. Nominations? So we organize the planning board. I don't have all my stuff with me, but I'll nominate everyone to the positions they're currently serving in. I'll, I'll second it. Yeah. So. Okay. That's this includes all of the auxiliary boards and everything, Mr. Dwyer. Yes. So okay. that will include uh, the uh, uh, what else PVPC, like? um, PVPC. Um, the uh, housing, CPA. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. We what about uh, what about Gnotic? Did we ever? He hasn't been appointed yet. Has he? He's not here tonight. That's slower on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Make sure we have fine. a motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Um. Next up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. Uh, that would be KLQCR. That, that's Bruce Jenks, Mill Valley Milk. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Yes. This is my first Zoom meeting. Um, we, we had to come in front of you. Uh, we've had uh, musicians at our uh, scoop shop for the last couple of years and um, didn't know that there was a application for live entertainment license, which we now have uh, in our possession. And um, so I guess we just have to meet to get your okay to continue to have a guitar player um, at the silos. We, it's not really booked as entertainment. We don't set up chairs, and, uh, sell tickets and that kind of thing. It's really more just background. Um, to keep people at the farm, to bring them to the farm, to promote uh, the ice cream and our uh, tiny little farm store there at Fort River Farm. I don't know if you're all familiar with it. It's at 102 Mill Valley Road, um, Gordon Smith's farm. We lease the, the farm there and, and run a small raw milk operation and a scoop shop and um, a storefront. So we just have on uh, Saturdays and Sundays, we occasionally will have a musician who shows up, who takes donations. Um, and, and plays music, um, kind of singer songwriter stuff. It's not any type of large band setup. They play from two in the afternoon to six at night. Um, our only neighbor is the Parsons, um, Amy Parsons. Uh, doesn't currently have any issue with with what we do because it's during the day. It's pretty quiet. So I was told by by uh, Tom Quinlan to come and present it to you folks. Yeah, the Cook Farm had a guitar player several years ago, and it didn't seem to cause any traffic tie-ups or anything <laughs> like that. It, it's a matter of degree. It's not a rock concert, so no, no. Uh, to to call it entertainment is probably um, giving it a little more than we should. But didn't you also have a car show there? No, we had a um, we had a thing. If you typically what we do is we give ice cream. Uh, away each day to uh, a particular name. So today may have been Jim, Joe, Mark, and Pam. Um, and if your name is Jim, Joe, Mark, or Pam, you can come and have ice cream. Some days we do it for teachers. Some days we do it for nurses. Some days we do it if you drive an old car. Um, it's that type of thing. It's not a, uh, we've never had a car show. And, and they park in the, you know, in the, in the general parking lot. There's not a, um, there's not an additional um, field. I think we might've had six, six older cars show up and that an older car is kind of a questionable thing there as well. The girls will accept pretty much anything <laughs> below 1990 uh, when they were born. So what's the, what's the name of your, ice, of your farm store? It's Mill Valley market on 102 right. Mill Valley road. Yeah. And the music is on what on Saturdays? Yeah. It's on Saturdays and Sundays okay. from two in the afternoon to six. <clears throat> and when you say you have the live entertainment application, do you do you have the live entertainment permit? 
or just the application form? We have the application. We have it filled out. We had to wait for this meeting to uh, return it to the to the gal in the town hall. Yeah, so the select board issues the permit. And yeah. Tom has a question, Jim. Yes, Tom. I was explain. Jennifer had said that if, with your blessing, she could, you know, go through with the select board and issue it, you know, or, or get their you know, permission to do it. But okay. she had asked if um, we came on the meeting for that. Okay. Thank you. I'm just curious, is there any farm exemption for this? Well, I mean, there's a, there's a thing in the Chapter 75 farming that uh, educational and farm-based recreational activities including agritourism, provided that the activities are related to the marketing of the agricultural output or services of the farm. And that's truly what we are doing there. We're trying yeah. to, we're just trying to keep the people there as long as possible. Um, we borrow uh, goats and um, sheep from the Parsons up the road and put them in a pen there. We have cows, chickens as well. People bring their kids and they run around and they go through the barns. Um, so really it, the whole thing promotes um, what we're doing at the farm. It's really kind of trying to bring families there and, and allow them to have some, you know, some, some sure. attempt at, at relaxation and their daily routine. Well, if you can sing old McDonald's farm, that's about it. No brainer, you know, Well, I mean, they're not charging admission for this. So they kind of falls into a, a different area, I would think. Yeah. They, they play for donation as well. Um, oh, we will that's different, but I mean, you're not charging anything. No, no. And the musicians, oh, I mean, they, they, they got like a tip jar out there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll make a motion to allow live entertainment in the form of one instrumentalist from two to 6 PM Saturdays and Sundays. Well, I can, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but occasionally it's a, it's a guitar player and like a fiddle player or something. So I don't know if you want to nail it down to a certain number. Of, uh, of I'll, I'll go to two. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion, uh, a second for two I, instrument players. I would second that. I second it. Yeah. Are you seconded? Yes, Sorry. I will. Okay. We got a motion, a second. <clears throat> Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, fellas. You're welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, next up would be Pamela Breeley. If they call it local, ask them to show you your cows. That's correct. <laughs> if they say it's local. If they say it's local, ask them. Yes. <laughs> I buy their ice cream. Ms. Breeley, you're up. Your screen says Pamela Breeley. Bresley? Pamela Breeley, you're up. What are you here are you, for? Are you what here to like? present anything or are, are you just- are you, here for, are you here for to present something or are you just here to watch the meeting? She might Pamela have Breeley, can you hear us? Evidently not. She must be on mute or something. Yeah. Text her or email her on the app. Yep. Let me see if I can get through. Oops, that's not good either. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm dealing with setting sun. So okay. I am trying to uh, find a uh, location that I guess this will do. I can do it. Uh... I can do it. Okay. I just, I just sent her a chat. Okay. Um, well, while we get that sorted out, uh, Eric Martins was next up. Okay. Eric Martins? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I, uh, I submitted an application for uh, a, a sign permit for uh, ARIS. It's where Excel Nursing and Therapy is now. Was, anyways. Uh, the address is 245 Russell Street. 
And basically the, all the job is, is really, it's just a sign, sign alteration. Uh, the belt sign that was on the building, it's being replaced the exact same size. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Bill has the, the proofs for that, but I can screen share. Were those the ones you just sent in today? Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, at the midnight hour, I, I reread the email and she's like, submit them a week before. And I'm like, oh, geez. Okay. Um, <laughs> Oops. But yeah, pretty much everything there is just, they're all going to be sign alterations. I think it was, it was two, two proofs I sent you. Okay. I'll let you, uh, I'll let you put them up and we'll talk about whether it, we are able to take it up. So you want me to screen share? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Here is the building sign. This uh, existing proof isn't correct. That's from when we did the we did the Excel signs before, so I, I used the existing picture. So it, it is a, a little misleading. Uh, but there is a sign sign there right now that we're going to be taking down and altering and putting back up. So that, this is the sign that you want to put up. Yes. And then there's, an, there's a couple uh, uh, panels going on the, the main sign, the pylon. I could show you when you guys are ready. Just let me know. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Next. That's externally illuminated? Yes, that'd be yes. Uh, this, this is uh, not illuminated. Not illuminated. Okay. Yeah, the sign itself, I think that light, it, it might work. I'm not sure. I can't say. Okay. Uh, but yeah, th these are just panel replacements right here. Me full screen that. Oh, so you're just going to replace an existing... Yeah, that's pretty much the whole scope of work. Okay. Okay. Any comments on the board? Questions? No. Fine. Make a motion to approve. I would second. Motion second. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. We'll get a letter, an email out to the building inspector. You should be all set, Mr. Martins. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take care. Pamela Breeley, are you ready? I gather not. I guess not. I right. believe everybody else is connected with one uh, of the projects that is before us. <laughs> Chris Chamberlain, Tom Corbett. Oh, Armani George. Did he? Oh, he... Just flipped off, I think. He, I'm letting him back in. Okay. Oh, he was here once before, right? Yes, he was in earlier. Our hi, George. Yes, hi, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, my name is Armani George. Um, returning to the meeting regarding ZG Motors at 249 Russell Street. Okay. Uh, last time we spoke <clears throat> uh, was regarding the, the taking from Route 9 and you guys wanted to see some signage, some sketches. Yes. Um, I have the signs uh, kind of made up from Photoshop. Okay. So you want to share your screen? Yep. You're set up for it. Perfect. Give me just a second. 
You guys see me? Yes, I see okay. it. Two, two garage doors. Yep, so this is where the sign is going to be going. Those are the garage doors. A little closer view of them. And here's what the sign is going to look like on the garage. So it's going to be 14 inches tall by 60 inches wide. Um, if those parameters are too big, I could always make them a little bit smaller. And this is what it's going to look like. Okay. I think that's okay. Great. Are they going to be white, any white illuminated or not? No, just a metal sign. Okay. Um, the, the other part we were trying to figure out was how much of your front yard do you have left after the takings? Correct. That I've been trying to figure out and I can't. So I'm just hoping maybe somebody else has figured it out for me. Um, from the measurements I've seen before. Um, how, many, like how many cars are you seeking to, to get a license for? Uh, the previous license was for three. So I was hoping to be around there again. And are you able to store any of those in the fenced area to the side and rear? Yes. Do you need anyone, any of them to be on display in the front? No. I'm, I would like to have at least one, but they don't have to be. Um, behind the uh, the fenced area, I could probably fit around six to seven in the rear. Okay, well, um, you said the sign is 14 by 60 inches? Yep, 14 yes. tall by 60 wide. Okay. <laughs> Like I said, if we need to make them shorter, that could also be done. No, 14 by 60 is fine. Perfect. What was the address for that again? 249 Russell Street. 249, okay. So um, I'll make a motion to approve the 14 by 60 inch sign as shown. Um, will you email us that image of that sign, please? Yeah, you can do it right now. And to allow up to three cars for sale with no more than one to be displayed in front at a time. Okay. Um, can I just get your email? Uh, planning at hadleyma.org. Um, you want all four pictures, what it looks like before and what the sign? Yeah, go ahead. Is 
So technically, I suppose the motion should be to waive further site plan approval for a 14 by 60, 14 inch by 60 inch sign and for up to three uh, cars for sale with only one to be displayed in front. Okay. That's the motion. That's the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Very good. Pamela Breeley, are you ready? Yes. I don't she has her voice, the volume down low. She's not responding to chats or anything. I think so. she's just observing. Okay. Uh, that is it for information. So you can open the public hearings. I think we can open the public hearings. Okay. The Hadley Planning Board will conduct Zoom public hearings on Tuesday, June 7th, 2022, beginning at 6.45 p.m., Purpose of the first hearing is to review the application of Joseph Sikowski to construct a dual use solar array of approximately 450 kilowatt off Shattuck Road. Product will be for 1116 solar panels and the ground below the panel will be used for agricultural purposes. The hearing will be to, the second hearing will be to adjust the planning board fees for special permits. Fee will become cost of legal ad plus mailings plus 10% for admin purposes. Um, details are available at a town clerk's office or by emailing planning at Hadley MA, uh, published twice in the Gazette, May 9th and 16th. Mr. Sikowski, you are up. I thought Jake Marley was supposed to be handling this, but uh, well, okay, he's out Mr. there. That's whatever, whoever, whoever, you're up, whether it's you or your, your designated uh, person is fine. Good evening. I think I'm, I'm going to kick things off. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, I'm Chris Chamberlain, civil engineer with Berkshire Design Group, uh, here with Jake Marley, or with, uh, with Joe Sikowski, who's the property owner for this project, and Jake Marley from Hyperion Systems, who's the solar developer. Um, and if I may, I'm going to share my screen and display the site plan. Yeah, go ahead. Great. <laughs> All right, everybody seeing it okay? Yes. Great. Um, so um, this is the property uh, that we're talking about, which is um, existing farm field in North, Hat uh, North Hadley um, off Shattuck Road, about eight and a half acres set um, approximately 750 feet east of the road. Um, the solar array, as you see in the proposed plan, is uh, proposed in this parcel here. Um, in the existing condition, uh, this parcel has an existing farm ditch, which is regulatory wetland along the western property line, um, and portions of the eastern and northern parts of the agricultural fields are also wetlands. Um, the project's already been through Conservation Commission, received a negative determination based on the proposed plan. Um, and uh, this field is accessed along an existing farm road that runs right along this property line here. Uh, and uh, this property belonging to Joe and he having permission from this property owner uh, on the cases where this uh, farm road, as they sometimes do, cross uh, back and forth over this property line. Um, looking at the proposed plan, which I will zoom in a little bit. So again, this is that main property in question, the Shack Road over here on the left, um, proposing a solar array covering approximately two acres of land within this site. Uh, there's a, a small equipment pad in the northwest corner of that field. Um, we're proposing to improve the existing access road into the field um, by upgrading it to a new gravel surface. Uh, that gravel road is 20 feet wide per utility requirements close to the road um, up until the point where we get beyond uh, the utility pole connections and then it drops to 14 feet wide um, in order to get into the site uh, just to get to the array 
to this equipment pad area. The utility connection is proposed from the equipment pad to run underground following that same alignment of the road uh, out toward Shattuck, where we'll have two poles, one of them, the arrays site pole, and then a new utility pole uh, located here in order to connect out to the uh, utility service in the street. On the, uh, as you saw in our um, existing conditions plan, uh, there's already existing heavy vegetative screening along this ditch here. We're proposing to infill this open side with an arborvitae hedge, um, and this will be a little easier to show on the um, aerial photo. Um, but while this portion of the field is open, over here there's a nutch um, woods to this side, um, and looking north um, uh, there's uh, Another wood line that you can see just about here uh, with really the only opening to the site um, along uh, this property line over here. Come back to the proposed plan. Um, so the existing equipment uh, pads would be fenced and locked, um, but unusual for some of these arrays, uh, the solar array itself is not proposed to be fenced. Uh, that's primarily for the purpose of allowing this to continue to be an active farm field and unfettered access for Joe and his equipment to get in here and continue working the land. Uh, that plan has been um, uh, shared with the police department. They didn't have any objection to, uh, to that access. And uh, Jake's going to talk a little bit more about the details of the solar array, but sort of a key point in this whole uh, setup is that these panels are uh, quite a bit higher than normal panels. They average 10 feet high uh, when they're on their tilts. That, that comes to about seven and a half. Um, so that uh, helps with the access for the equipment and the farming um, and also really uh, makes it uh, difficult to reach um, for anybody who, who wanted to mess with them. And, you know, the reality is if you can get seven feet off the ground to a panel, then you can a six foot fence probably isn't gonna stop you. Uh, not that there's much reason to, to be doing that in the first place. Um, as I mentioned, CONSCOM's already reviewed and approved this plan uh, based on the layout you see. Uh, we're incorporating um, as shown on a site preparation plan, erosion controls around the perimeter. Uh, these uh, panels are set on um, I-beam posts uh, shoved into the ground. Um, so really the only land disturbance associated with the trenching for the utilities and some of those equipment uh, for the installation that run back and forth over the land. And, you know, I would argue that uh, the disturbance that's going to come from the construction here is no worse than if a, if a field full of corn were planted there uh, in terms of this disturbance of the land. It's a very flat site. Um, it does uh, run off in multiple uh, directions from a high point located roughly here. Uh, proposed uh, construction is to surround that with erosion controls while there is disturbance. Um, and as was noted in the application, um, because of sort of the, the light touch of the site plan, uh, we're requesting a waiver from the stormwater management requirements due to the negligible impact of the site. There's minimal impervious area. There are no concrete posts associated with any of these solar panels. There's really just that um, concrete pad uh, for the equipment. Um, and then we are, you know, adding a compacted gravel surface, although for the most of that run, uh, we're really following along an existing access road that's already um, uh, sort of compacted travel way to begin with. Uh, and then in addition to that, as, as we're going to discuss in just a second, um, you know, the land use here really is to continue being active agriculture. Um, there's been a lot of coordination between Jake and Joe to ensure that, that this is not just a hand wave, oh yeah, we're going to grow some stuff under the panels, but to actually let this be a true dual use, which, which is uh, you know, an interesting uh, part of this project that, that I found uh, uh, pretty uh, interesting to work on. Um, and so, like I said, it's a pretty simple site plan. So that's pretty much the highlights that I have for right now. Um, now I'd ask jo uh, Jake to just uh, walk you through uh, some of the high level details on that solar array. I just had one question for you, Chris. Yeah, sure. Uh, and um, probably Jake's gonna address it, but <clears throat> you were talking about site disturbance. I'm just wondering how the panels are connected. There must be some wiring cabling between them. Is that aerial or is it underground? And how does that get to your collection point? 
Sure. Um, Jake Uh-oh. can talk about how that network works together. But um, when I when I mentioned the trenching for the electrical, I, I was uh, in my head, I was talking about among the array and not just along the driveway. But I, okay. now hearing you ask the question back, I can see that that was confusing. Yeah. OK. Any thought about putting batteries on this site to collect electricity? There's not any plan for batteries at this time. And quite frankly, uh, I don't think it's a good use at this site. I, I think batteries can be sited elsewhere. So, why, so no, I'm just curious, why isn't it a good use just for our information? It, that would be an impervious surface. Um, that would require a much larger concrete foot pad and that would be taking the land out of production. Okay, but you know, our bylaw allows it. I do understand that. We, we don't have a plan okay. for, for a net metering type of... I'm, I'm assuming, okay, the panels I'm assuming are fixed position panels. They're not, they don't rotate? They do rotate. Um, so they, they do rotate. They do, they do also, they, they track the sun east to west throughout the day. Um, oh, they do, okay. As, as Chris said, they're, they're going to be elevated approximately, well, 10 feet off the ground. So in okay. addition to Joe and I coordinating this, um, this is part of the Massachusetts uh, solar program called the SMART program. And in order to qualify for the dual use, you have to go through rigorous um, application and, and process with Mass Department of Ag Resources. And, and so they've set a standard for any single axis tracker, which is what this um, type of, of solar installation would be called, uh, to be 10 feet at module horizontal. So that would be the lowest point. And then first thing in the morning, they'll be tilted a bit more, as Mark indicated, about seven and a half feet. And then at the end of the day, seven and a half feet. So by using that type of single axis tracker versus a fixed tilt, we'll be able to increase the, the amount of energy that's produced on a, a, the same footprint or actually smaller footprint. What, what kind of, what, what are you going to be raising here, Joe? I'm going to start off with broccoli because I guess that's what does best on in situations. Uh, UMass has studied it. Some other colleges have studied ideas. We'd also consider other crops like uh, Swiss chard or even might be the easiest if we plant it, we might be good for So basically some kind of like a, a, a vegetable lettuce type crop. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of research being done right now on different crops that do well in these settings and we'll, we'll start with broccoli, but you know, we have to rotate our crops. Yeah. So we'll start with that and then we'll, we'll work into different rotations that are shown to do well in other settings in other states where they're doing similar work. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm just curious, but they nothing to do with the solar. It's one which you'd be raising, that's all. What, what's the estimated life of this solar field? 20 years. 20 years? And then what happens after 20 years? There could be two five-year extensions um, per Joe's approval. And at, at oh, least... Joe. Kids, huh? Or my kid's approval. Or, or right. <laughs> yeah. And... Sorry, go ahead. Do we have a... A bond that's going to be posted? Yes. So that's one of the questions that, that we've had. Um, and I believe um, Doug from Berkshire Design Group has reached out. Um, and I, I, I would pass that back over to Chris. I don't think we've heard back and, and we're hoping to understand what that bond requirement is. We do understand that there is some financial surety that needs to be, um, to, to be posted. Is that... Is that bond for the removal like we do with the solar, um, with the uh, wind, I mean? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so the idea is they post a bond so that if they skip town and you guys are left with a defunct solar field, that there's some uh, financial ability to come in and then have it removed. Okay. And so, yeah, that, that requirement is in the zoning. Um, Jake and his group are committed to, you know, posting whatever that surety is. Um, we just need clarity on, on exactly what and how much. Well, it's, it's really how much it's going to cost in 20 or 30 years. Right. There, there is a need to include, um, inflation increases at, have you done any projections? Yes, I, I have, but I, I don't believe it's up to us to determine that. My, my recollection, and we haven't done one of these for several years, is that we started with a projection okay. 
provided by the applicant. Um, we negotiated a, a uh, you know, cost of living is, is a shot in the dark. And then we do uh, 1.5 times that to allow for the fact that if the town has to take it, we have to pay prevailing wage. Um, so um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at the formula. I, I, unfortunately, I don't have that, uh, the full motion on, um, on this computer. So I'm gonna have to wing it a little bit. And so Bill, what I'm hearing is that, that Jake should submit his cost projection um, as a starting point for you folks to review and then then apply, you know, markups or or whatever else as as you feel correct. Thank you. I'm just curious, why is it 20 years? Is is there deterioration in the panels? Is that a built-in obsolescence? So it's it that's it, a that's a very good question. There's within the smart program, the um, incentives are for 20 years. There is degradation within the panels. Uh, there's losses of efficiency each year. Um, and so the panels will still produce what we've seen from arrays um, that Hyperion owns that have been installed for 11 years. There's some losses, but there's not as substantial as we would have thought. So the, the 20 years is determined actually by the, the solar, uh, the Massachusetts solar incentive program. Uh -huh. So when you calculate the potential returns to the owner, you built into that build into that calculation the deterioration over time of okay yes there's some anticipated uh, losses over over the life of the system i just don't want you to be taking advantage of Alby farmer that would be sad the, the, the panel do de supposedly deteriorate i got panels on my rear shed that are nine years old and i'm getting virtually the same output today as i was on day one Oh, you're special, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I certainly wouldn't be surprised if the panels that went in, you know, 30 years ago that were studied for 20 years uh, were inferior compared to the materials for the panels that went in 10 years ago. Are the panels coming from the People's Republic? Let's stay on topic. Yes, I, I believe that um, what we have proposed right now is, is Jaw Solar, um, and, and they are based in, in China. Although there, there is um, heavy watching and, and scrutiny, um, and, and I know that there was just, um, there, there was a pause on, on um, foreign modules for the past two years. And, and I think that uh, on some foreign modules, I should say, I don't watch all of this um, as closely, um, but I, I know that it's scrutinized um, a bit at the federal level to make sure that the, the um, sourcing of materials is, is done in a appropriate way. What do you mean appropriate? That it, it, I, I can't speak to all of um, globalization, but I, I, I think that um, it, it, we're not trying to use, we're, we're using modules that have been around and been proven um, successful and, and that meet um, our US federal government standards for um, how they're sourced and, and how they're fabricated. In slave labor? Right. Yeah. There's, Let's uh, stick to zoning. Okay, I just, I just wanted, wanted to pin him down here. That's what he meant. Okay, you can put that in the minutes. He said yes. <laughs> Any other I, I, questions, I, I, comments from anybody in the audience? No, I mean, Berkshire Design ought to give this young man a, a raise. I think it was intellectually honest and forthright to answer that yeah. question in a timely fashion. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Very nice presentation. Thank you. Joe picked a good group. 
Thank you. And I, I'll give all the credit to Doug Serrell, who put all of this together, but then decided to go on vacation this week and, and left the boss to deal with it and sound like he knew what he was talking about. So <laughs> <laughs> I just had a flashback. Did somebody in North Hadley ever have a windmill? To generate something? Yes. Who was that? John Devine had one on his dairy oh, farm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would pump water from a well didn't pump for the last 80 years, so they took it down. Okay. They still do that in the Midwest, but we digress. So yeah. that would be John Devine, the elder, not the John Devine, the former member of the planning right. board. Right. Um, okay. Any other comments? No, I was impressed. Hearing none, Mr. Dwyer, motion, if you can. Okay, so I'm, I'm actually going to, I'm not gonna participate in this, and I do not have uh, a motion on this computer. Okay. So I will move to continue it for two weeks for decision. And I will uh, block out a master. Okay. We'll just send it to me if you want. Okay. Right. So, so I will make a motion. We'll continue the hearing. But basically, from what I can tell, you will be approved, Mr. Sikowski. Thank you very much. Well, we can't officially do it until two weeks in at our next meeting because of <laughs> Mr. Dwyer, because of what Mr. Dwyer just said. But you should be all set in two weeks. Okay, okay. great. So, is there a second to that? A motion to continue? Yes, I will second. second. Yeah. Okay. Motion a second to continue to June twenty-one. First day of summer. Yes. Is it? Yes. yes, it is. Right. Okay. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously to continue. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all very much. much. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck, Joe. Okay. All the strawberries. All the strawberries. They're tasty. They're good. Very good. Stop. I might, well, I can't really say that in a meeting, but they're good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Right. Okay. Um, next hearing, we'll do vote. We'll do mo the motion. Will be to change the planning board fees for special permits, and that will be like a, the uh, mail. The uh, notice said it'll be the cost of the legal notice plus the cost of the mailings, and then ten percent of that cost for administration admin administrative. Uh, fees and purposes. So let's say the uh, the legal notice have been going crazy lately. Um, the legal notice, I believe, for that little one that was just pertaining to um, in a newspaper for this actual notice, I think was the actual fee was four hundred and seventy four dollars. Well, this is what happens when you have a monopoly, and well, I think please. perhaps. They should look into regulating how much can be charged for public notices from by newspapers. It's outrageous. And you should start your own that, paper. That, it may be, but however, we're stuck with it. And yeah, but then, what I'm um, saying is perhaps the legislature because, should look at this. Because they supplied the uh, stamps and the envelopes, there was no 10% for mailing, so it basically came out to be $525 or $550, based rounded off. And uh, so... Um, most of the legal notices have been running between really four and a quarter and four seventy five, and those are for short ones. If we have a longer one, like I see some of the legal notices in the Gazette for mortgage mortgage uh, foreclosures, those things have got to be mighty expensive. So I mean, ours are probably about I don't know what three inches in the Gazette. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, um, any comments on the proposals? Proposed fees. Were you serious about me starting my own newspaper, Mark? I, you have a lot of opinions. You could. Well, it could be don't, just don't you, agree that don't you agree that we got a monopoly here or not? I think that there were more papers and they can't survive. We need to buy more. I support the local That's the only, the only paper serving Hampshire County. 
Well, it gets, you know, they slice and dice it even more. The uh, probate court requires that if someone dies in Amherst, the legal notice be published in the bulletin. Oh, boy. But if it, they die in Hadley, it gets published in the Gazette. And there is a statewide list of what newspapers are considered acceptable for which communities. Oh, oh really? God. So, um, but at the moment, yes, the state legislation does require that it be published, various things be published once or twice in a newspaper with a circulation in the community. Yeah. So what happens, isn't the Holyoke transcript out of business? It is. <laughs> there is a substitute Holyoke newspaper. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Um, entertain a motion to approve the proposed fees. So moved. We have a second. Second. Motion to second. Any other discussions? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Very good. Takes care of that. Um, oh, we can uh, appoint. So we do have one more public hearing on the agenda. Yeah, oh, okay. Tom's here. Tom Corbett's here. Yeah. Was it zip? We reopen the public hearing on the uh, gravel pit proposed solar battery storage on the gravel pit off Breckenridge Road. Tom, remind right. me, what's, what, the, what is the name of your business? Uh, ZP Battery Devco is what the applicant name is. Zero point to development. Okay. So last time, um, so I guess we've kind of left off since about February timeframe um, when we kind of stopped talking about the project and more so started talking about a bylaw amendment um, situation. So just to kind of recap briefly, uh, we submitted this project back in December and I believe it was like around the 14th. Um, and then we had later in the month, we submitted the project uh, through the planning process with the Berkshire Design Group for peer review um, at which point in time, the scheduled hearing, um, our first meeting was January 18th. Um, and at that time, we kind of just reviewed the project scope, uh, where we were. Um, and then at the following, um, at that first meeting, there was question for um, how it fits in the bylaw. Previously, we had got the zoning determination from Tom Quinlan, um, the planning board, you guys here um, requested town council's opinion. Town council came back um, and their opinion was that it doesn't quite fit multiple scopes. If you're looking at it the way that he's looking at it or she is looking at it. Um, so I guess I'm here to kind of get a direction from the board because we've kind of postponed all this stuff off talking about bylaw amendments and trying to rush that stuff through um that i believe did not come to fruition or passed or even submitted to town meeting um so it kind of brings us back here as to where we want to go the board's opinion um i was hopeful to work with you guys on a bylaw amendment um just don't know where you guys are at as a board as far as your opinion on um how this fits in what you guys would kind of like to do. So I, I'm kind of leaving it open to a direction from you guys. The, uh, we started to put an amendment, a zone amendment, and because we kind of rushed it through for the annual town meeting, it just didn't sound right. So that's why we withdrew it and didn't vote on it. We're hoping to bring it back in the fall town meeting, which typically is in October or so. We'll get it, we'll get the wording much more succinct. Um, so the only choice you have right now is to either put solar panels on a property with your battery storage, because that is a permitted use, or wait until the bylaw amendment goes through. 
Okay. Um, is there an opinion about, I know there's been a lot of talk around zoning and where and appropriate. Um, is there a, is there a workable angle to come to any kind of conclusion on zoning with this, with you guys? Is there an opportunity to work with you on this? I guess I'm trying to ask realistically. Yeah. I'd kind of like, and as you know, I have a lot of opinions. Uh, I'd kind of like to have somebody from the state uh, the Department of Utilities come before us and tell us what the plan is for the state and how Hadley fits into this plan. And but I'd also like someone from Everforce, Eversource to come by and how tell us how Hadley fits into supporting their grid. You know, uh, so because it's just, you picked Athol, you picked Hadley, you picked what is it, Lancaster, and somebody else. These there's. Yeah, so I can touch on that just a little bit. I won't bore you with the details. I think that's a great idea is to maybe get some kind of opinion from outside of me telling you my information. And I, I get that angle there. Um, so I've got projects throughout Massachusetts. It's really not about a town name. It's more so about where solar is being produced and where it's getting distributed to realistically. And when it comes down to it with the concentration of solar in areas and it just so happens that it's it's a it's a three phase leader that could be 40 miles away from the <laughs> other closest three phase feeder that might be a good one um so it's really production based on solar and stress on substations from that and it's really uh, to def to defer the infrastructure upgrades and to allow the um the electricity to not take up so much hosting capacity on the three phase line, got it, but got it. yeah. So uh, speaking for myself, I always remind people, I only speak for 20% of the planning board. Um, I have no problem <laughs> with battery storage. Uh, we've approved it in conjunction with other, um, with, uh, with solar fields, with panels as an adjunct to the panels. So, Conceptually, I don't have a problem with it, uh, but I defer to town council because it is his opinion. You don't fall into, you don't fall under the definition that appears in the bylaw. Um, so I think, as Jim said, we'd like to work on this a little bit and hopefully get back to it in, um, in October. Uh, it strikes me that you have three options at this point. Uh, one option is, which I don't really like because I, I don't think it really is consistent with the spirit of the Zoning Act to, to agree to a, a six-month continuation of your project. Um, that is a little bit of a bookkeeping thing on our end we have to remember when you're scheduled back and uh it just becomes busy work <clears throat> the second option is vote on your project um because of the ruling of town council i don't think the vote can go any way but a rejection and if you are rejected you can't come back for two years uh without specific permission from us. And then the uh, third option is to uh, withdraw your application without prejudice. Uh, we've done this in a couple of situations where a project for whatever reason wasn't as ready to go forward as it initially appeared. And we would waive, well, we, as you see, we just went through the filing fee phase. We have historically agreed to waive the filing fee on the uh, provision that you'll pay for re-advertising when you resubmit. So uh, those strike me as the three options at this point. Okay. I know you guys can't give me like an answer either on your, how, what an outcome of a bylaw is going to be, but is there, I need to know just kind of we're in this with, Eversource and we're, we've got the project still being studied and still con, some consuming funds. So I, I know zoning in the districts were a topic of some of 
discussion with the amendment. So is there a feeling one way or the other from the board, like heavily or strongly against this in this zone? Or is it something where we should be not looking at this with every source kind of, I know you don't want to tell me it's one way or the other, but I just kind of am looking for a feeling engaging the board and how they might be looking at this and if they'd be willing to work with particularly this project in the future. I thought we were leaning towards industrial zones for this type of project. Um, well, I mean, and if that I, isn't I, where I, your three day theater is, then. Yeah. I think Bill made a, a, a very thoughtful presentation. And if I were the applicant, I would choose option three. Uh, many people ask for a straw vote. I think these are not for us to speculate uh, right now because we want to hear more facts about it. So I would not be in favor of a straw vote. How do you feel? And sometimes you change your mind after you hear the facts. So I'm just curious, have you Understood. gone to any other towns since you've been before us to propose, propose this type of system? Yeah, um, since I've started discussions with you, I've fully permitted projects in Southbridge. Uh, I've actually got five, four projects on one property in Southbridge. In Uxbridge, that's fully permitted. Lemonster is fully permitted. Project in Orange is fully permitted. Um, and I'm getting into Charlton now. Um, Brookfield so Southbridge, is- Southbridge, for, for instance, Southbridge, where is that located in the town? In Southbridge? Yeah. Uh, that one is off the beaten trail, uh, which is kind of the point, um, is to kind of put it down. But we particularly this site, um, my company has developed five solar fields directly across the street. So that would be the objective of that location. And working with the town of Southbridge, um, we just kind of, it all fell into place nicely. Thanks. And don't get me wrong, none of these none of these towns are like a quick in and out. This is, this is, this is typically kind of how we try and approach it. I try and go in and see how the feeling is and see what everybody's looking um, as far as zoning, as far as bylaws, as far as comfortable with the solar bylaw and several of the towns we permitted through the solar bylaw uh, just pertaining to wording and like it, um, yours doesn't, and that's fine. Um, other towns I've like Lancaster been working with a, on a bylaw amendment that got pushed off to um, the fall just because of certain situations in town. And did you locate it there because the feeders came into this area? Yeah, so it has to do with that. And, and it's, it could be anywhere on that three-phase feeder, but just when I looked at this feeder particularly, it just made sense. The property just made sense. It's not really very well developed all around it, really. Um, you have a pretty good buffer from this project. Um, to the nearest houses, to really any activity. Um, it's pretty well set back into the gravel pit. So that's kind of why I chose it. And we submitted it to Eversource and they've been studying it ever since. And that's coming up to an end now, but um, that's kind of where we're at. I kind of just go into every town and I look for the properties that are kind of unique and that you could have that buffer. So it's really not an issue. It's a non-issue really when you get there. Um, you get that natural buffer, you get setbacks, you don't, they're low impact, they're high, high density, low impact projects. And I try and cite them respectively and, and respectfully. Um, but that's what I try to do here as well. That, that gravel bank is more industrial than any parcel in our industrial district. <laughs> agreed. Very much agree. All right. Um, yeah. So I guess I think it's, definitely best for me to withdraw without prejudice um and i i think i'll take your um your points and try and get some opinion um maybe to your way if you guys want me to reach out to anybody i have contacts and a resource and if that's something you guys want in the future feel free to reach out to me um Bro. but if you, if you don't mind i'll keep in touch bill and um i won't uh, yeah. consume too much of your time i would learned a lot I've learned a lot listening to you, and I really yeah. appreciate your courtesy, your honesty, and your uh, intelligence. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. I've appreciated our time. Um, I'll continue to hopefully work with you guys on this. Um, so yeah, I would like to very much like to uh, 
uh, like to be kept in the loop on any bylaws you're developing elsewhere? Definitely. I've got actually three or four of them amended right now for submission. So once I get those poked into the towns, I'll share those with you as well. So I'll make a motion to allow withdrawal without prejudice uh, and a, if refiled to waive the filing fee with uh, except for the uh, charge for the legal notice and mailing. Second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate you guys. Have a great night. I'll stay in touch. Thanks, Tom. Just a question to the board. Did we get any participation from anyone on Quinlan Drive on this? Did anyone show any concern or care? Or, I mean, aren't they the closest as, as you know, in, well, there, there's a house or two across the street on Breckenridge, but. I'm, I'm not. Uh, I had contact from one property owner who abuts the site. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. I don't know if anyone else had contacts from anyone. Mr. Grilinski called me about it, but he had he was the only one that I heard from. Okay. Thank you. I just felt like I was, it was my duty to protect the interests of the people on, you know, adjacent residential areas, but if they don't care, or if they thought that the battery would support their grid, then perhaps I'm being counterintuitive. So, okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Same. yeah I appreciate that, Mark, but maybe they just don't, understand why they might want to care <laughs> right. that's that's okay um other business we have is to appoint uh, andrew Gonatic to the housing um planning committee uh so moved second motion second all of any other discussion all in favor aye aye, aye. any opposed motion passes unanimously very good. I will let him know and let the town clerk know so he can get sworn in. And what other business do we have, Mr. Dwyer? Anything? I don't have the agenda in front of me, but um, I let me see if I can bring it up. Oh, we well, we, we reorganized. We put the uh, delegate to the planning board for the housing production plan. And the only other thing we have on here is conditions. An affordable housing trust fund updates and, and planning board procedures. And those are placeholders, right? In case I we understand. want to discuss any of those. Anybody any bills to pay, uh, Jim? Sorry, what's that, Mark? Any bills to pay? No, no. Okay. We never figured out who Pamela Brilly was. I think she's so just watching. Yep. All right. Uh, which she is free to do. Yeah, sure. Um, Mr. Tom? Quinlan, do you have anything? No, the boss. Does your system building commis commissioner have anything? Yes. Um, Jim, I just wanted to know if one day, that if you wanted to stop in and go over, um, take a look at how we have the scanner set up Okay. for our our maps and stuff and see how you guys want to have yours set up because she'll be ready to you know start working on yours too okay. maybe either tomorrow or thursday sounds good okay probably more likely thursday okay hey tom do i need a, a building permit to put tomato steaks in my garden no thanks <laughs> you, you need a building permit for that it's more Agricul yeah. agriculturally exempt right <laughs> give it five years you probably will though it's less than 200 square foot, right? Those stakes. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you plant five acres of tomatoes, Mike. Okay. I got about 40 plants. <laughs> Holy smokes. The tomatoes. Yeah. yeah. It's a okay. lot of work. 
tell me about it. I went to my physical therapist today and she, uh, I said, this was my, my thigh felt like it was on fire. And she said, well, let me see what's going on there. I came <laughs> off the table. <laughs> she does these fingers on hands on stuff. She's got a tool and she gets in there. My goodness. She's good. I have nothing else. <laughs> I have nothing else. Anybody have anything? If not, motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Motion second. All in You're favor? Com coming over here, Zeke? Uh, yes. Aye. Okay, good. Uh, Aye. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank good you, night. John.